welcome to Nonprofit Network, powered by Stokes Auction Group. We are a group of fundraising professionals that specialize in raising funds to improve communities of all sizes. Well, here we are. Here we are. A podcast. Welcome so, to hey. Nonprofit Network. Yes, kind of sitting casually today with these yeah. gentlemen. I am not the moderator, Shelby Stokes. Holly Schinfeld here. We're about ready to celebrate the June solstice. That's why we Yes, have, uh, it's coming up. Coming up. Stay tuned to our Facebook page because we're going to put a welcome to summer picture up that we're trying to figure out, which our two almighty leaders will really appreciate me for. But that's kind of why I do it. Yeah. Right? It's just, uh, poke the bear. I think poke you, the bear. You just want to see the reaction, don't you? Yeah. You're like, oh, mom and dad are going to be so mad. Let's do it. Let's do, do it. it. Yeah. Let's blame it on somebody yeah. else. Yeah. <laughs> Let's definitely do that. <laughs> so question again today is yeah. um, we've got questions. Of course, I have questions. And I think the way that we're going to kind of kick this one off today is ask you to, do you think tuxedos have worn out their welcome in the auction business? Yes. Yes, I do. <laughs> tuxedos <laughs> are <laughs> bigger to fast. Yes. <laughs> Period, exclamation point, end of conversation. Tell me yeah. why and tell me wh what your belief is on, so it's kind of a two-part question. Right. Tell me why you think tuxedos are over with and is back to suits, right? Because mm -hmm. I'm inclined to agree with you. And tell me um, if you believe that there's a difference in the revenue raised if you have a dress up or a casual, because that's kind of an old thought. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So go. Well, from my perspective, yeah, especially during the summer or in the spring, mm -hmm. it's terribly uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. you, know, you got three layers on. You got the shirt. You got the vest. You got the coat. Okay, again, this doesn't have anything to do with what your comfortability is. <laughs> well, oh, no. All right, I guess I need to readdress the question. <laughs> so your question is: Let's were... make it more about me. <laughs> most comfortable i'd like to come naked <laughs> yeah uh, <laughs> we don't I'm need a microphone my stand. Skivvies. yeah, yeah. No, uh -huh. so Your my question questions is, were are the days of the tuxedo kind of filtering out because uh -huh. those used to be for the you know the jdrfs and the big you know galas like that and are you know people are we going kind of more to suits and things like that or should we mm -hmm. um especially generationally right they're kind of changing and not are you comfortable in a tux but <laughs> as well as do you think that the revenue is affected by how the um gala guests are dressed i do not believe the revenue is affected by the attire whatsoever i think uh at this point it really comes down to comfortability it feels like to me um the for the guests for <laughs> paul See, he doesn't want to dress up either. <laughs> yeah. And I don't. Let's be real. I don't. But at the same time, like, I normally like to be one of the better dressed people in the room. So mm -hmm. if it's, like, semi-casual, oh, you might wear a coat. You know what I mean? So I just want to be just, like, at that upper end of, like, what the formal wear is. So you want to be better than everybody else no, in the room no, is what no, no. you're saying. I never want to feel... <laughs> Yes. Sorry, I yes. want to be the best person there. I never want to feel underdressed. Right. I never want to think to myself, I'm underdressed for this event, ever. Because right. yeah. then you're uncomfortable for the entire night, mm -hmm. and it doesn't inspire confidence. Especially when your contact is like, mm, you're going to wear that? Yeah. Is that your pajamas, or do you have something up in the room that you could, oh. yeah. Is that your dad's shirt? Mm, okay. <laughs> Who tied that tie for you? Yeah. Um, I, I, I really don't feel that tuxedo yes no dictates revenue whatsoever um some of the biggest events i did this year was like theme based and people dressed up in very very casual wear yeah. and it was uh still an amazing fundraising event no issues it feels like tuxedos are a thing of the past but really i think it's that formal event in general that is kind of breaking down like in the past, it felt like if you were somebody, you had a tuxedo mm -hmm. or you rented a tuxedo and it was a lot of fanfare around it. I don't feel like that's the case anymore. And what about it's you? It's a black tie. If, if, if it calls for black tie, then you, then you got to do it, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. You got to well, do or, it. Or, you know, I mean, do you have to do it? Or is it, can we be the change in that culture or not? 
or are we going to follow suit? Oh, so I'm not very funny of you. I'm not funny of you. Well, I mean, I am the one that said about 18 months ago, I'm going to start wearing sneakers and never wear dress shoes again. And you haven't done it yet. And I still to this day wear dress shoes um, more than sneakers. If I can get away with sneakers, I'll wear them. But it feels like I need to be in formal shoes. And if, if there's one person on our team that came and said, oh, nice sneakers. Ever since then, I haven't been able to wear. Oh, is that right? Yes. Okay, so mm -hmm. it's it's a confidence thing. I have, well, I have seen like yeah. like like our local newsmen and women. Mm -hmm. not, oh, I see so it at galas women, all the time. But men, Do you? yes, yeah. tuxedos and sneakers. And sneakers are are, are a thing. Or like, suits. I want to do that, but they got to like, be nice sneakers. They got to be problem. Nice. Yeah, they got to be nice yeah. sneakers. You they can't be, wear your. You can't wear your nubby your old mower new shoes. Your, your, yeah. <laughs> Sorry about the hole in the toe. Mm. But. Oh yeah, these are vintage grass green. Don't <laughs> worry about it. Yeah. We, the, grass the black tie over. gala, 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 however you want to say it, has typically been that upper echelon JDRF, bigger, mm -hmm. multi-million dollar events where every, everybody else in the room is also dressed to yep. the nines, men and women. That's what I'm talking, yeah, the group yeah. itself, the entire right. group, yeah. I'm not sure if that is ever going to change, but, you know, think about how the style of the tuxedo itself has not really changed that much. And very limited, very small. It really hasn't changed. Right. You know, styles change constantly in our society, as we know things come and go, but you never really see the tuxedo really coming to major yeah a, a, a theme is not going to make or break your fundraising event right yeah and but that, can and it affect your there no. used to be there used no, to be so. a thought process do you mm -hmm. remember this that if it was more of a casual buffet more of a casual dress that it, it wasn't maybe taken as seriously do you think that that is going away do you boys remember that 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 mentality paul you would for sure right i mean we're getting long in the tooth. So yeah, you I mean, that. you're I a little think, young fella well, here. Yeah, maybe I, I don't not, remember but. that. I have no recollection of that. Do you have anything to say to that? Um, I think it. it I, nothing really jumps out at me. So nothing really jumps out at me as a specific example because I've always just gone along with, "What do you want me to wear? Mm -hmm. Okay, I'll do whatever you want me to do," mm -hmm. and 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 I don't give it much thought because my mind is so focused on every other thing, but. Mm -hmm. I also, to your point earlier, mm -hmm. when you look good, you feel good, right. and your performance is affected by that. Then you're not hamstrung in your mind going, oh my God, you know, I'm either under or overdressed here, and you're constantly focused on that no. rather than trying to do your job. Mm -hmm. At least that's been some of my experience. I, I feel like in the past, wearing a tuxedo was kind of like virtue sing signaling. Like, I've made it. I can afford this piece of, mm. of wear. And anymore, like, the individuals that are kind of that upper tier successful individuals are Zuckerberg, Bezos. And they're wearing Bill Gates. Jeans. And exactly. And they're in, like... Polos, you know yeah. what I mean? Like jeans and polos. Yeah, it has nothing to do with the way you're dressed. Yeah, yeah and I think that has True. affected and seeped into the culture quite a bit. Yeah. Yeah. That doesn't mean that people aren't going to get into a theme. I think anytime you're theme related, you should expect people to lean in and you have to dress a, dress to the occasion. My thought, the thought that comes to mind is Great Gatsby. Anytime there's a Great Gatsby theme, you better be in a very tuxedo. nice suit or mm -hmm. tuxedo. Yeah. Tuxedo preferred at that point. Yeah. Sure. So auctioneers are always known as heroes or zeros is yep. the way I like to put that. Heroes or zeros. And, <laughs> and big old zero. You know, I mean, they get too much credit and they get too much blame. Mm -hmm. We know that. True. Can you give me an example of how you, ha how you would handle mm -hmm. an organization that may want to give you too much blame for why the night wasn't successful. I'm sorry, what's the question? An example of when we got beat up over something. When you get beat up and yeah, it comes back definitely. to you, how do you um, handle that as an auctioneer? And, and you know, speak to this one's going to be more, um, if any of our auctioneers are, or ringmen are watching, it's going to kind of be more focused to them than it is people that are putting a gala on, right? But, you know, how do you handle that and, and move positively forward after that happens? Yeah. Because again, you're 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 a hero, and it's all because of you. Or 
you ruined it because you didn't ask for the $2,500 level. I mean, or... there, there's there's two ways to address this, right? Like, how does one as a performer or an auctioneer recover from something like that or recoil off of that is one answer to that question. And the other one is how does the group move forward after an event like that? Mm -hmm. So which, which answer would you like? I would like the auctioneer side, not the group so, side. So I think that what you have to realize is you are a very small cog in a bigger event, right? It is our goal to do as best we can to execute the event flawlessly. That said, events are inherently going to be um, unplanable. Like you can plan as much as you'd like, something is gonna go wrong more likely than not and you're gonna have to, to make a move to make that work. In the scenario where you are getting a lot of the blame, um, you have to point out what the actual issues are and hope people hear you and just know that you have done your best in that one moment. In other words, if you miss the $2,500 level and you should have asked and you did not, people could have stood up and said something. Mm -hmm. Somebody could have said, hey, I'd like to give $2,500. A teammate could have said, hey, you're missing the $2,500 level. And just because one person has made that mistake in that moment, being human, being flawed, knowing that mistakes are going to happen, it becomes that person can get the blame, but for the greater good, people should pitch in and help the best they can. Um, in terms of, of trying to cope with mistakes, you just have to learn and move forward. You know, uh, people have off nights, but I can tell, I can say from experience, I learn more from an off night than I do an on night nine times out of ten. What about you, Paul? I've been through this situation before. As a matter of fact, I mean, within the last year. Okay. So I would consider this topic kind of maybe fresh on my mind. And internally, I still really haven't gotten over it because, you know, nobody likes failure. But I'm not above admitting failure. Mm -hmm. right. But I want to know, I, I want to know specifically what it is that you failed that, at, that I failed at. Yeah. And mm -hmm. what circumstances led up to me making that decision that ultimately ended up being wrong in the other person's mind. Communication is so key here, right? Mm -hmm. You lay out your expectations of me and I'm, what if I misinterpret them? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Just completely innocently, right? Because I know my personality, I'm not overly arrogant and I'm not difficult to work with or for, mm -hmm. right? I'm very open-minded, have always have been. And I think that is uh, integral into somebody's success, being able to work together with people. Um, this was completely, totally a misunderstanding. Mm -hmm. I heard one thing when the person's intent was a completely different thing. So in that moment, when I said, hey, he offered 30 spots on his by the head, I got 35 spots. Can you do five more on the mic in front of everybody? Mm -hmm. He felt trapped. Gotcha. Because he was in front of the entire audience and he didn't previously give me permission to do that. But during our conversation, he didn't specifically tell me not to. Mm -hmm. Well, and you so, guys. And in the end, the way I handled it was I fell on the sword and I said, yes, he's right. He never gave me permission. He never said not to, to defend myself, but he never, he did not give me permission. So in effect, he's right. Yeah. yeah. And I'm sorry it happened. And, uh, you know, I learned something from this which I did, because mm -hmm. now I know. Mm -hmm. That'll never happen to me again. Right. right. Hey, Shelby, you've got 30 spots. What if I get 32? Is that okay? Yeah. Yeah, 32 is okay. How about 37? You know to no. ask that question. Right. You know to ask that question. Now I get mm -hmm. that exact number. Yeah. Exact number. Yeah. And don't leave anything to chance. It was a tough lesson learned. This, you know, I lost a gig out of it, man. Yeah, and I think that losing losing a gig is what is, is is the struggle. You know, from a ringman's standpoint, you know, I've had a situation where this was years ago, and I hadn't quite honed my yell in yet. You know, and it was very high pitch, mm -hmm. and that can be women especially can mm -hmm. struggle with that because it to hear a woman yip is a lot different than hearing a dude do it, right? Because it's low and from the belly. Well, now mine has changed. Mine is different. Mine is low and from the belly, but it took me getting that, please don't have her back. Well, that's difficult because my husband's the auctioneer, you know, and right. we're kind of this team. And um, so that, it is hard because then you dance around that. But what it did for me mm -hmm. 
is it had me practice and practice and practice. And I know that sounds dumb because it's not a craft like you guys have, but it's, it's a part of what Mark and I do. Mm -hmm. So I had to really drop that down for me and, and get that handled so that I could, you know, and I addressed that person the next uh, event. And, and they said, don't bring her back. And I says, I just want you to know tonight I'm recording. And come to find out it was a misunderstanding, you know, mm -hmm. is that there was a person there that, to be quite honest with you, was preferred Mark to be there alone gotcha. as opposed to having his yeah. wife be there. And how so, often does, does it... Do <laughs> Oh, didn't, oh, this is the first time hearing the back end of that story. Uh, I knew the first part, that last part, complete left turn from the way that. But was Mark wasn't. A, I mean, that wasn't him at all, right? But you know that. Yeah. Now he's not going at all. Now so. he's not, nobody. Out of there. But you know, I had an annoying hip back then, probably too. You know, but and that was the you know talk about falling on a sword. That's it, right? But you know, some people also don't like women to be involved in that. It's a. I mean, I, I'm coming to the point in my in my life cycle where I realize that I'm not for everybody, and I think that's what you have to realize. It is like you know, you add the initial question was, well, how do you cope with like being a zero? Um, I've had those events, and I walk out of there not feeling good, knowing it's not going to be a good review, and then I get a negative review, and it sits on my mind. Mm -hmm. So I'd rather not even go. You know right. what I mean? So if if you would like somebody else, then go for it. You know, you want to work with people that want to work with you. And if you do swing and miss and it happens, you got to move forward with it. You really do. Um, anybody that's going to completely blame like an auctioneer for the entire event falling apart also might be concealing some issues or insecurities that they have on their own. Right. You know what I mean? Well said. Dude. Right. And that's very, very Absolutely. possible. Right. You know what I mean? Don't look into yourself. Let's look to blame others. Uh, yeah. Yeah. yeah and, exactly. And again, you know, you yeah. said something earlier that's really key is that human. We are human. Mm -hmm. You are human. You are on the microphone and at any given time, the spotlight is on you. Mm -hmm. Even though you are not trying to be the spotlight, you want the the um, bidders to be the spotlight. You know, that's one thing Mark always says, you know, they got a camera that's going to follow him. He says, don't follow me, follow the bidders. It's their night. It's their party. It's it's them. I'm just the caveat to it, mm -hmm. right? Because he hates being on the camera that's besides so that. Good. But oh, yeah. yeah, but yeah, anytime they really, want to. That's a really good note for a videographer. Is. Cause like, I mean, yeah, we've absolutely. been there. Yeah. You're going to be on camera. You're like, okay, uh, whatever, right. move on. But I like that approach. Of yeah. Saying, Mark just, he does. The bitters on the camera. He says, don't worry about me. I'll, I'll be, but uh, you know, get that, get out in that audience and look at see who's bidding and then try and keep up with who was the last bidder and play that game. So people can watch it happen. Right. You that's know, the part so. they want to see. Yeah. That's the part they want to see. Right. It is brilliant. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. That's but Mark. Talking. Is brilliant. Well, Mark well is brilliant. yes, of Mark course. I mean, really. You're saying that as if you're going to put a picture of him on the internet. He's not going to like. <laughs> and it's not that he's not going to like it. It's just that it's, it's just that he's going to hate it. It's yeah. not that he's yeah. going to hate he it. He doesn't have a choice. It's just that we're all going to enjoy it at possibly his expense. Oh. I think people should be more uh, open to accepting the fact that that they make mistakes. Okay. That being that said, that being so, said, who can't accept the fact that they make mistakes. I, I just don't understand that philosophy. Well, part of that's a protection advice, a thing because they are accept. They, they do realize they make mistakes, but they, let, they just have to get let it. Me, into let it. me play devil's advocate though. Like you, you are paid to do the right thing in this moment. Mm -hmm. We have paid you to grab that microphone and raise as much money as you can and act accordingly and act accordingly. So when you don't do that, you're going to hear about it. Mm -hmm. and I don't think that's unfair. That's a good point. You're right. I don't think that's unfair. You're right. You it's know, not unfair. If, if I pay somebody to mow my lawn and they sh don't sh don't they mow half a lawn one day, they're going to hear about it. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? <laughs> if we paid you to do a job, we have. But if you paid them to do to mow the lawn and you wanted it to be crisscrossed and you don't tell them that and they don't crisscross it, it is not on the person mowing the lawn. It depends on who the judge and jury is. Oh, is they should We're not talking about lawn, mind. by the yeah, way. We are not talking point, about Susie. lawns. My lawn needs to look like the outfield of the Mariners, okay? Yeah. Politics. What about politics? Politics. Do you engage in political conversation at 
all at an event. No. No. Oh, that's no. very fast. No. Nope. Uh-uh. No. no, thanks. Have you? We don't want to. Ah. Uh, yes. The pause. Probably. <laughs> I mean, I, 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 don't, I don't know. I mean, there was a time there where there was news going on about politics every day. And for me to say I didn't discuss it on site, it seems like pretty outlandish. But it's not, it's not my go-to. It's not your go-to, no. But let's say you get sucked into a conversation. And this happens where you are you don't want necessarily the person that you work for to know your political views. Because those are very personal and very private, right? Mm -hmm. But they are trying to pull you into a political conversation. Mm -hmm. Because they want to know where you stand. We, yeah. We, and, there's a guy that we work with that does this all the time. And so so how you know do about? you handle that? Okay. I think so. How do you I, handle how I do you handle being so. try being pulled into a political conversation? You try to get away as fast as you can. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Run! Run quickly! Hey, I gotta go do some oh, silent shoot. I got I got I gotta close the silent. I got. I have I got irritable bowel syndrome. I, I need nothing to go. going on, and I got to go tend to it right now. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh huh. Yeah. Oh, I think I triple parked my car. Okay. Yeah. So, uh -huh. so, how do you handle that? Uh, I, I kind of yeah, yeah. I'm gonna go yeah, uh huh, uh huh, and then walk away. I would do the same thing. Yep. I would do the exact same thing, and I've done the exact same thing. Yeah. Probably right. with the same guy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, the same thing. <laughs> I don't want to engage. It's, in my personal opinion, right now, it's especially dangerous. Very dangerous. And I just think that, you know, if you're in that professional environment, you want to be respectful to the individual talking to you. And you don't have an opinion that night. Only about the gala, right? You shouldn't have an opinion, or should you? And how do you handle that? For me, it would, it, it, it would depend on who it came from. It's a dicey question. It, it is, is a, a dicey, dicey question. Dicey is question. it coming from the executive director that hired me, or is it coming from a guest? No, I'm talking about the team that hired you. Okay, so your primary contact is trying to get in a political conversation with you. Yeah, and if and 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 is and it's uncomfortable for you to not respond, yet you know you can't respond because your view is way different than theirs. Well, I'm very masterful at avoiding conflict when I write. <laughs> so yeah, I would immediately right? change the yes! subject. You know what I mean? Like I would immediately change the subject. Hey, did you hear about so-and-so? Yeah. Yes, and Isn't my wife has bad? a great cookie recipe. You know, my wife is a teacher and she loves teaching second grade. I'll be like, we weren't talking about that. I'll be like, yeah, you're right, but I don't want to talk about that. <laughs> you scared me. <laughs> <laughs> However, you possibly can get away in a nice, respectful way. So, at the best you can, get yourself out of agreed. that situation. So, it's <gasps> a board. <A> board. <laughs> so, here's, here's, I gotta go to the bathroom. Here's a pretty, here's a pretty <laughs> right one. now. So, during the pandemic, we did a lot of virtual shows, hence this beautiful studio. Oh, it right was now. painful sometimes. And there was a virtual show where one of our guests put in Donald Trump as their bitter's name. <laughs> yes, and this was at the height right. of like. I forgot about this? That. Yes. Yes. I do. Right. <laughs> I do. <laughs> And it was Whoa. right at the height of the political turmoil that was going through this country. Oh, where shucks, you were I remember like that. Oh, and God. it was like, oh, Donald Trump is bidding again. <laughs> I can't say that. Can I say that? Can we say that? I don't know if we should say that. Yeah. Oh, it was hilarious in hindsight. In yeah. the moment, we didn't know what well, it was funny then, too. We didn't know what to do or how to handle that. <laughs> how did we handle that? Can you remember? We'll have to go I, back I, and watch. I think that we never actually said Donald Trump. I think it was DT or Don. Right. Someone Dawn. was going to Don, right? I think it was Dawn. He was like, Don's in, Don's yeah, in. I but the thing is, is, people are on their phones. Like, they can see who's bidding yeah, against them. You can. know what I mean? It's not like you're concealing much, but oh, that was funny. But yeah, in what? terms of like discussing politics, no thanks. No yeah. thanks. <laughs> yeah. That and like the, the swing of politics in America in general is just crazy like it Too changes yeah. from week to week to month to month like it's i can't keep up with it anymore and i'm kind of choosing intentionally not to keep up with it and i'm a lot healthier for it yeah and i think that I, you are yeah we all are when we don't 
pay attention. But, yeah. you know, I think that um, people try to engage differently to give you the feeling of one unit. Hang with me on this. Uh, so they they may they may want to test or see what your religious views are, your political views are, because you're the first time auctioneer for them, and so they're kind of wanting to feel out if you're a fit, as opposed to just understanding that you're going to go there, you're going to be professional, and you're going to do your job that night, mm -hmm. right? Right. They may have to want to really feel like, oh, we're one of the same group. And, and so you guys will get and have gotten into mm -hmm. sticky situations where that happens to you. And there's got to be a formula that you could share with, you know, newer auctioneers or even old time auctioneers that have found themselves in that situation or will find themselves in that situation and the skill to pull yourself out of that can't be going to the bathroom or just, you know, is it okay to say, I think that that's probably not a, an appropriate conversation for us? No. No, I, because no, that pulls them away. Yeah, no, I think because that's negative. You that's always want to be yes and and building together. I think that like as a person in this line of work, it's very unique because you are consistently like, gauging where you are in an environment. Like you are constantly taking context clues and putting them to work for you. Okay. Like if you walk in and you get a story in a certain vein and then you make a joke and they find that funny, we now know that something in this person's mind is funny. Test Therefore patterns. you can, you can move like, I can't bring that up cause that was before we started recording, but like, uh, just, uh, I, I, I can't come up with an example right now, but if you find like, a certain type of humor works better than the other, then you push in that direction. Mm -hmm. And the same is true with like getting to know people. Like if you walk in and it seems like it's politically one way or the other, you can kind of push in that direction, but you don't necessarily want to fully commit in any one direction. What do you think, Paul? Sense? Then I have only one last question. Well, I think that, you know, when in France, you know, do as the French do. Yeah. I do a lot of Catholic school auctions and I am not Catholic. Yet what? I keep going back, right? Great. Now we so, have to delete this episode. Now we have to when, delete this episode because Paul's not Catholic. <laughs> so when the father gets up there and prays and everybody be, shuts up and everybody bows their heads, so do I. Well, but that could be out of simple respect for the crowd that you're in as well. That is exactly my point. Yeah. That is exactly that's my That's acceptable. Point. If you are in that environment as a paid individual and you're there to do a job, you got to kind of assimilate to this crowd to a certain degree. Mm -hmm. I mean, you, I can't be openly like, no, I'm not going to pray. I'm not Catholic. <laughs> Sorry. You guys go ahead. Just give me a cigar I'm and a probably scotch. probably standing right next to the stage and everybody can see me, right? Mm -hmm. Probably looking at us. Right. Mm -hmm. So you just yeah. do what everybody else does. Yeah. You have to kind of try to be a part of that group, even though you're not a part of the uh the church organization in with that particular example shake hands or hug it depends mm -hmm. it, it depends <laughs> on the individual like it like does. For, like like i have given more handshakes in the last three years than i have ever before and it's because of the cancer cancel culture that we're in right now which is cancer well, cancer culture and cancel culture two very different things no but um, it, that you know what i'm saying but 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 the, there are many individuals that are very sensitive right now, and that's okay. Mm -hmm. Like, that is something that is real in our world, and sure. we have to respect those boundaries and those opinions of people. Because um, it's the world that we live in, and everybody is created equal and needs to be treated equally, in my personal opinion. Um, if somebody were to see a hug as me establishing dominance in a relationship, that is a problem. That is a problem for me. That is a problem for that person. And if it's a problem for that person, it's definitely a problem for me. So I will normally kind of like right. give like an awkward thing. Keep talking. But see like this, you're initiating this. You're initiating it. So it comes back to the initiation of the person. Okay, so keep going. I'm sorry, but I agree with you. No, it, uh, that was initiate. So you if gotta, they initiate you gotta, you get, a yes. hug, 
it's cool. Yep. yep. And, and I've given more handshakes this year than, than I have in, in a long time because mm -hmm. I err on the side of caution. Mm -hmm. And normally it starts with a handshake, handshake and it ends in a hug. And that's okay. Beginning of the day or the night is a handshake. And then at the end of the that night is exactly a hug. That's what I was going to yeah. say. That took your answer. That's usually what happens. Uh -huh. Hey, how you doing? Nice to meet you. End of the night. Oh, great night. Yeah. Right. And it's mutual. Mm -hmm. And see, I ask. Because I go to all the meetings and everything. Mark and I do it together. I feel very blessed to be able to do that. The guy doesn't go to any of these things by himself anymore, right? Which is kind of fun for me. <laughs> but I'm like, I got my eyes on all you people. <laughs> I got this. But, um, it, it, you know, if, if it's somebody that you know from the past, obviously you're going to hug them, right? If they, but you don't know what's going on, right? Mm -hmm. Or if they're a couple. But, you know, um, if you say, I'm a hugger, is that cool? And they reach their hand out to you, that answers your question. There's your answer. There's your answer. You're not a hugger. So you probably need to go to therapy for that. But anyway, <laughs> <laughs> no, I agree. I agree with you. It's a handshake in the end of the night. It's a hug. Yeah, it's got to be the lesser of the two right now in today's yeah. world. It's got to be. Agreed. I've always, you know, uh, when when this this societal change started to take place, and I think it has happened within the last 10 years, right in the middle of our careers, right? Yeah. This change started to happen. Mm -hmm. I remember it was like, because I never really was used to shaking a woman's hand mm -hmm. like yeah. I do a man's. Right. But women want that respect. Mm -hmm. They want it. Hey, treat me just like a man. Mm -hmm. yeah. But it, I guess it must have been maybe the way I was raised. Mm -hmm. I mean, you shake a woman's hand differently. Mm -hmm. But now you don't do that. You got to do it just the same as you Oh, God. Man. If somebody shakes my hand and it's like, mm, Wait, what I'm is like, this? What is this female handshake? This is gross. Yeah, I mean, this is, that, oh, hi, nice to meet you. No, get I, in there and just, hey, kind of chip out here. Oh, not wow, to reach I felt you that. I, mean, I had to be shown this location. I didn't I didn't know that. Yeah, you I already were... didn't know. It's like, I, I don't really know what to do here. I already don't. You know, Jamie's yeah. like, shake their hand just like you would a man. Yeah. Okay. What's up? She's right. Yeah. What's up? <laughs> fist yeah. bump, brother. Yeah. 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 I, uh, yes, I'm a that's fist bumper thing. now, too. Now fist that's bump. That's it is a thing. Yeah. I don't do yeah. the fist bump. I don't like the fist bump. If the two of you ever fist bump me, we're going to have a prop. Nope. Not even a... Oh. Oh, you thought that. Not a fist cool. bumper. Why? I, I just, you know what? I'm a hugger, or if you need to shake my hand, great, whatever. But I, if I hug you, that to me is a, a real connect. And, and this is just my view on hugs. You know, hugs are like if I hug somebody and I don't feel them hugging me back, you know, I think that we as humans. <laughs> I think we as humans, like there's one person that hugs me and they hum when they do Don't it. hug and hum. Don't do it. It's We're wrong. saying it here. It's so if wrong. If you're giving a hug, do not hum. Do not hum is, during yeah. your not hug. Hum. Don't do it any It makes noise. it weird. It we don't does. want to make it weird. Don't do so it. What do you do weird. if the individual you're approaching leads before you do and addresses, a, gives you a fist? I haven't had that happen. For, and they're waiting for you to either we're gonna, we're gonna test or now fist bump or what do you? I doing? will never fist bump the two of you. Period. Um, I will look at you like, what is your problem? Do you have something in your hand you'd like to give me? Because do you have a cookie? What's <laughs> what? Yeah, what's the cookie. matter with you? But you know, if so it's, what do you if, do? I haven't had that happen. I guess what I would do if somebody you know was standing there with their fist like that, I'd put my hands on my hip and say, "All right." Uh, but you know, I, hugs over here. yeah, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna either shake your hand, make it mean something, because the the handshake is a, is a, it you know it's a greeting, it's a one, but I can't stand this. No, yeah, see, number yeah. one, the number one reason is is because ladies, let's talk about the arm flap. They do that, and then your arm flap. No, I don't have an arm flap. Arm, but you are you are so you, you afraid you're gonna that. take off? Yeah, you don't need, you know, you're Fly doing right this away. wiggle with my hand, and I'm like, it what is that? Strong. No, one mm -hmm. boom, and you're done, and I'm out. Well, or, if you came here to figure out how to socially greet individuals physically, we are here for that. Hey, we, yes. It's a hug, a handshake, or a fist bump, and you figure out how close you are with your friends following that interaction, it sounds like. So those are our questions today. So I would hope that you guys would be watching this and say, wow, Kelly Schoenfeld sure does ask some great questions. But right. in case you don't think I do, please 
Send one in for me to ask these gentlemen. There we go. These genteels. Now accepting questions. We appreciate hanging out with us today. Thank you for being here this week and every week. This will bring us to a close on the Nonprofit Network, sponsored, powered by Stokes Auction Group. Today on Social Issues with Paul, Kelly, and Shelby. Thanks for joining us. Social Issues. <laughs> Bye, guys. <laughs> Bye, guys.